1967's Angel with the Iron Fist is a Hong Kong remake of Dr. No with a gender swap, replacing Sean Connery with Lily Ho. Copycat spy movies are not a surprise, and the Bond films themselves have tried to copy Hitchcock, Black Power, Kung Fu, Star Wars, Jason Bourne, The Dark Knight, so Turnabout is fair play, but replacing the a sexist, misogynist dinosaur who is James Bond with one of Hong Kong's leading beauty queens was an interesting move even for a studio which had built its fortune by casting tough, cool women in action films. Women like Ivy Ling Bo, Chung Pei Pei, and Shih Tzu. Angel with the Iron Fists and Dr. No basically share the same plot. A government agent has been murdered, and so an international spy flies to an island location to investigate. The first half is a police procedural with inept attempts by a shady organization to stop the hero. But then the spy meets with her M and Q and gets useful gadgets. So she infiltrates a secret supervillain lair which is full of fanatic followers. The lair in both cases includes a fully staffed concierge department, because why not? The agent gets offered a position inside the villainous organization, but instead crawls around in some air ducts and ultimately blows the lair up, not without escaping with their new paramour. Comparisons abound to the other early Bond films, the exploding boat from From Russia With Love, the villain lair, the mimicking of the Thunderball soundtrack, the straight-up theft of the From Russia With Love soundtrack, There's even poison-tipped knife boots like Rosa Klebs. Angel with the Iron Fists did not lead to a 59-year, 25-movie franchise. There are sort of three movies in the Agent Ling Ling Jo series, Angel with the Iron Fists, Angel Strikes Again, and Interpol. Two starred Lily Ho as Ling Ling Jo, Agent 009. The third, which came out within months of Angel with the Iron Fists, instead featured her Angel co-star Tong Ching as Ling Ling Jo. He is kind of forgettable, and here's a spoiler. He gets killed at the end of Angel with the Iron Fists, and I totally forget get that every time I see it. So forgettable that he gets recast, Tung Ching plays a different character in all three Ling Ling Jio movies. To be fair, that's like Maud Adams in Man with a Golden Gun and Octopussy, or Martin Beswick in From Russia with Love and Thunderball, or Joe Don Baker in The Living Daylights in Goldeneye. Tung Ching is not going to sell a lot of tickets, but Lily Ho does. She was the most successful of a dozen starlets the Shaw Brothers basically marketed as beauties in the early 60s, the 12 Golden Hairpins. This was her seventh film, having previously made teen dramas and, and lit adaptations. More experienced than Sean Connery, to be honest, who came in as Bond off the kids' fantasy Darby O'Gill and the Little People. What feels quite different is casting Lily Ho in place of Sean Connery. Connery's Bond is a ruggedly handsome cad. He murders some men. And you've had your six and treats women as plot elements. Director Lo Wei, who cameos as M, awkwardly tries to blend Lily Ho, the action star, who's never quite believable, with Lily Ho, the fashion model. You could imagine Ivy Ling Bo or Shih Tzu pulling off the action side, or Chung Pei Pei riding the middle ground, but Lily Ho is all about the outfits. And this doesn't entirely bother me. I watch Dr. No almost purely for the outfits and furniture. It's a 100% Bond lifestyle movie. It's never about the plot. Angel with the Iron Fist pulls off the same thing. Cool sets, wannabe cool sets, cool, cool glasses. Most characters in this flick get numerous costume changes. Lily Ho, I think, gets 21 costumes over 90 minutes. One reductive criticism of Lily Ho as an actress is that she was a clothes hanger, just a woman with a great figure on which the studio placed outfits. Bond, however, is not far off. I've had friends refer to Pierce Brosnan as a J.C. Penney's model, which is also not really fair to the most sociopathic James Bond in the series. For England, James? No. But for Lily Ho, it wasn't just the studio determining that a pretty girl should wear pretty outfits. Ho turned her genuine passion for fashion into the next stage of her career. Most Shaw actresses only stayed for a few years, the notable exceptions being Kara Hui and Chung Pei Pei. Ho worked at the studio for 10 years and then quit to launch Hong Kong's first real European fashion boutique called Act One. 
She lamented that the city was, fashion-wise, a year behind Europe and six months behind Japan, but she planned to close that gap and get Hong Kong started as a fashion capital. And if you visit Hong Kong today, it is safe to say you will never be as well-dressed as most of the locals. In Lily Ho's brief ten years at the Shaw Brothers, she did massive epics, she did action films, musicals, teen romances, a role as a teen boy, comedies, fantasies. She marked a couple of firsts, a much-talked-about, if tame, nude scene in Night of Nights, and a splashy LGBT role in the trashy revenge film Intimate Confessions of a Chinese Courtesan. She did 42 movies over ten years. Not a bad career for somebody who was just one of the 12 golden hairpins. And she was the Hong Kong James bond. However, I am not going to pretend that this film is some sort of feminist masterpiece. There are cringy bits. There's a cat fight. There's a bad girl who wears either nothing or um, some sort of sexy mermaid costume. And worst of all, there's an embarrassing swimsuit contest in Act 3 that has nothing to do with anything. I mentioned before that Bond works because he's not just a cool guy in cool clothes and a cool car, he is also a cold-blooded sociopath, as the series happily reminds us again and again. I'm just a professional doing a job. Me too. I would ask you if you could remain emotionally detached. But I don't think that's your problem, is it, Bond? No. I wish they'd tried something similar with Ho in this film. She mostly comes off as just an extremely competent secret agent. But what she doesn't have is anyone to play off of. Bond has Money Penny and M and Q, and even by 1967 they had fleshed out those relationships in ways to tell you who Bond is. He's extremely competent, but he's irritating to his superiors and co-workers. He can't relate to women except through sex, except for Money Penny, whom, according to Lois Maxwell and Skyfall, he may have had a long ago fling with. And because sex is now out of the way, they develop a flirtatious but platonic friendship. There's a lot to work with there. But what does Lily Ho's Ling Ling Joe get to work with? One perfunctory M and Q scene, although Lo Wei brings some warmth to it, and she has a love interest with zero sparks. So in the absence of emotional relationships, who is Ling Ning Jiu? Is she here for queen and country? Is she defending democracy? Capitalism? Those were pretty thorny questions in 1970s Hong Kong when the Brits hadn't really started respecting Hong Kong's sovereignty and the mainland was allowing waves of illegal immigration that pushed local unrest and newcomers like the Shaw brothers themselves had only just gotten settled. The simple answer is that Ling Ling Jiu is fighting crime and bad guys and that's great for Saturday matinee goofiness. I'll admit the movie tries to add too much to the very simple Dr. No formula of police investigation goes underground and boy does it get wacky. But if they didn't keep going with the series, it's because the sequel is much worse. In Angel Strikes Again, Ling Ling Joe is introduced go-go dancing alone next to a pool in a bikini. And I guess that's cool. Maybe when I get a pool, I will spend my days off go-go dancing next to it. But the movie never really figures out what to do beyond that. Where the 67 Angel film triumphs is that it has so much style. The tour going into the Assassin's Lair nears Ken Adam greatness, albeit on a Shaw Brothers budget. And the villain, played by Tina Fey Chin, is great. She chews scenery. She kicks up her gold boots. She has a moving throne like Jabba the Hutt. You actually get a better feel for the evil Madame Jin's principles than for Ling Ling Joe's. She demands and respects loyalty. She executes one of her top agents for sexually assaulting a co-worker. She has a mysterious, very specter-like assembly of international women who matter more to her than her Hong Kong army of minions. Tina Fey Chin is kind of awesome. In the musical Hong Kong Nocturne, also with Lily Ho, she plays a femme fatale. And in the way over-the-top campy spy film Temptress with a Thousand Faces, she plays this phantomos-like villainess and also the heroine. She melted my heart in the Gulong adaptation Swordsman at Large, in which she didn't get nearly enough screen time. Tina Fey Chin is the woman you want the hero to marry, but he goes for someone much more traditional instead. So what do you get when you recast James Bond, the A sexist, misogynist dinosaur, with the woman mostly known for wearing clothes really well? Something not too far from the source material, honestly. Gadgets, suits, stealthy spying, exploding lair. Angel of the Iron Fists and Dr. No are both like reading GQ or InStyle magazine. You get ideas, not deep ideas, like why are we here, or can we end misery on Earth, or how about that afterlife? 
but ideas like, I really need more pocket squares, or what if my tables look that good, or why am I buying cheap sunglasses when I could look like that? Now I'm off to Google where I can buy that square shaded lamp, and maybe a villain lair with giant fish. <laughs>